How's it going ladies and bruce, it's Bobby 6 killer and welcome finally to a series on Disco Elysium. I no doubt you've heard about this game before already. It came out a couple of months ago and it blew everyone away. It is an unbelievably unique CRPG. Very... Uh, if you're going to compare it to something we've done on the channel, I would compare it to uh, Torment Tides of Numenera. It's lots of talking, very little anything else. But it's some of the writing, I've, I've watched a bit, I've uh, had a friend who plays it. I've heard so many good things, the writing is astounding. We're going to jump in. I, um, I want to create my own. I think I want to create my own. Let's like really, really get into this, you know? So what do we got here? Your senses, how agile you are, how muscular you are, your psyche, how emotionally intelligent you are. Okay, so, I feel like intelligence is going to be probably my my best, uh, it's going to be my best thing, and psyche is probably going to be my worst, I would imagine. i would probably put it somewhere like that. This, I don't know how balanced, I, you know, it doesn't even matter, you know, because this game, like, it changes everything depending on what you pick so at the end of the day i don't think it's going to matter too much you know let's let's go let's go five in intelligence one in psyche one in agility and four in physique so we're going to be <laughs> um lumbering and intelligent which is an unusual uh, dichotomy there but also slow and um insensitive <laughs> that's perfect oh wait we got extra points do we have an extra point yeah, we can, there you go. <laughs> Lumbering and intelligent, but insensitive and slow. I'm curious to see how that rolls. Seems unusual, you know? I like that. Alright, what do we got? We get a signature skill. The skill you select will gain a plus one bonus. Additionally, the learning cap for every skill of the same type will be raised by one. Meaning if I pick one in intelligence then I can get plus one in any of the intelligence ones is that what you're saying that sounds interesting what do we got here visual calculus reconstruct crime scenes make laws of physics work for the law Ooh, I like that understand creativity see up and that's not me play the actor lie and detect lies the art of persuasion sounds like good to me call upon all your knowledge produce fascinating trivia Wield raw intellectual power, deduce the world. What else we got? Endurance. Shrug off pain. Flex powerful muscles. Love and be loved by drugs. Raise the hair on your neck. Tune into the city. Threaten people. Ooh, I like that too. I'm gonna go with rhetoric though. As my signature skill. <clears throat> Sounds good to me. Now I know this best part is voice acted, so I'll shut up. <laughs> but I brought drink for while I'm reading much. These will be like I'm reading a story to you. So if you enjoy listening to my voice, and you don't need to be watching something, you can just listen, this will be perfect. There is nothing. Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious for men, Cine. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, baby. Simply keep on non existing. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained <laughs> within it. Oh, this is good. This is great. Yes, it is. Give me some more. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. How about you cough up more of that sweet oblivion? Coming right up, sir. Smooth <laughs> passage. I'm gonna get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? 
Don't be naive, of course not. I want to sail the inky blackness until forever all ends. Right. Nothing town to fuck all borough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's visit the ancient zero hole. Great choice, Elder One. It has always been like this, and it always will. Wait, no, I need to belittle myself instead. Do you really? Come on, let's you go. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much over yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Tell me, what's waiting for me? There's this giant ball there. In evil apes. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. How big is the ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're juking it out. It's that large. How small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. Infinitesimally. And this dunking it out I keep hearing about. What's that? Oh, duking it out, sorry. Fine for resources. It's a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. That's sad. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. What do you mean drowned? You lost. The sound outside, you recognize it. It's the Corpreus Kinema motor carriage. Open your eyes. Oh, that's horrifying. Turn it down. Make it stop. Okay, I'm gonna keep it up. I think it's meant to be unpleasant. Alright, we look healthy. <laughs> Alright, uh, what, what do we got here? This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. Oh, thank god. This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Oh, pants! <laughs> I do love some pants. Well, actually, I, I don't like wearing pants very much, but, you know, whatever. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. Push them out. Key to room one. It says whirling in rags on the aluminum key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Ooh, it highlights everything. That's cool. Let's have a look at the bath then. We don't look so good. We don't look so hot. Maybe we should splash ourselves with water. You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. What is this? Jacket? White satin shirt. Hmm. Talk to myself in the mirror. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Was this not the same Elan that founds empires and lays waste to cities, virile and caring toward the little things? Probably not, no. Hot water sprays from the faucet's base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just a vague impression of a man. Wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand toward the surface of the mirror. Wipe the mirror. Behold! I have no idea, you have no idea who this thing is, do you? Of course I do, it's uh, some kind of superstar? I think I'm a superstar. This is the face of a late stage alcoholic. Too late. You clearly have the rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? <laughs> I have no idea why it's there, it just is. Please stop, it's horrible, you're scaring yourself. Okay. Oh my god, you can't stop, it's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You've worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. <laughs> what does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? God, I don't know, it's indescribable. <laughs> I think it's supposed to look suggestive? I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off too, in a sad has-been kind of a way. There's some charm to it. Let's go with that. There might have been, ten years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. 
Electrochemistry. Uh, 42% is still pretty bad, man. Well, we'll give it a try. Dig deep in your mind and locate the source of the expression. Yep. We're not even going to try the other one. 3%? Not even worth it. Hey, a shoe! Sick! <laughs> oh, wait. How many shoes do I have? Do I only have one shoe? I wear the shoe, I guess. What is that? Alright, alright, alright. Alright, calm down. Uh, there's a tie! This fan has two chain pull switches. The other end is a tiny fan, the other end a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie somehow attached itself to one of the blades. What do we got here? 17. Pull on the fan. The blades come squeaking to a halt. Should be easier to re reach the tie now. Can I grab the tie? 58%, that's still not good. I'll take it. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap! It's released from the blade. Sick, I have a tie now. I think I only have one shoe still, but uh... You know. Can't win them all. <laughs> I guess we'll leave. <laughs> What's in here? Is this part of my apartment? Or is this somebody else's apartment? Nope. Not going that way, apparently. Stop limping. It's sad. Now, who are you? The calendar says it's March. The year is 51. 1951? 2051? Hey, lady. Hello, officer. What's her name? Classy. Miss Orange, disco dancer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Officer? Am I military personnel? Uh, no. And why'd you call me officer? Because you're a police officer, sir. She pulls on her cigarette. You're shitting me! I'm not. Unless <laughs> you've been shitting us all this time. She takes another drag. All this time? You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. And what business is that? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Seems like it, yeah. Um... I might not know where I am, or who I am, or what Cupris Kinema is. How I know, or how I know what one sounds like. I don't remember being a cop or anything else. What's this one here? Very low, no. Who in their right mind would let me be the, an officer of the law? Don't be so harsh on yourself. Don't let almost anyone be a police officer. <laughs> oh, my feelings. Why don't I remember being a cop or anything else? Could it be because of the drinking? She raises an eyebrow, the cigarette sizzles. She nods. But I do know when someone's not telling me the whole story. What am I doing here? What's my case? She takes a long drag before speaking. There's a mercenary out back. He's being ha hanged. And the body's been there for a week now. The locals probably got tired of it and called the cops. Why didn't you just tell me that? Didn't mean to overwhelm you with information. You seem a bit lost, officer. I should get going now. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. Okay. It's alright, I'm not much of a police officer, clearly. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Goodbye. Bye, lady. Go back to that crack pipe of yours. Um, what do we got here? Looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray. She's still smoking. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living shit out of it. Am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? A monster? A murderer? The gnome of Jeroma? You feel like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub. Still smoldering deliciously. She broke it at the filter, I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. 
But you should look for a whole cigarette or better yet an entire pack. Strike that a carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied and smoke them all. I should not not do that. I'll think about it. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all the time though. Doesn't count if it's not all the time. And when you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. I don't want to! Plus smoking them gives massive bonuses! No, I'm an ex-smoker in real life, I don't want to. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time trying to put them out of my mind. <laughs> you know? I don't want to think about them anymore. This is a weekend edition of a, the satirical newspaper, Trump Le Monde. Okay. What else is around here? The writing is bloody brilliant. It is so funny. It's very clever. Right, what do we got here? Something on the table. Money? 40 cents! Oh yeah! I'm a baller now. I'm missing a shoe still. <laughs> The smell of the sea makes you dizzy. <gasps> Shoo! Gust of briny wind washes over you. Hmm. There they both are, two identical shoes, both green and indiscriminately snakeskin reunited on your feet. Like two baby crocodiles. Well, these don't look like normal cop shoes. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. You may be what they call a big dick cop. <laughs> How do they fit? Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only thing about you right, right now, truth be told. Cool. I have shoes. Two of them. Can I run? I can run. Double clicking. That's how we do it. That half hour episodes, we're not going to get that much done, unfortunately, but you know. It's going to be hilarious what we do get done. <laughs> Probably hilarious and also sad. <laughs> This is where the lyrics would be, if I had any. A big old karaoke mic, just waiting for someone to sing into it. Mm, pass. The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. Island Inland Empire. You should totally sing karaoke, your karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know of your vast oceanic soul. <laughs> My soul is modest. It's normal sized. Exactly. It's measured, level-headed, and it needs to be heard. Through a PA system. <laughs> By other people. Whether they like it or not, ram it up their ears. <laughs> Says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. What should I sing when it comes to it? You've not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You'll wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. Lamentation sounds good. They'll really get a gauge on my soul with that. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their faces with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. You have to find something, to, something tragic to sing first, though. I don't want to. I don't want to sing something tragic. I want to sing something metal. <laughs> I guess that could be tragic. The menu's been wiped clean. I need to have Mondays written on it. What the fuck is that? Freebies. This is a water cooler. A large bubble ri is rising to the surface. Hey! A woman hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts in a man's handwriting. Interesting. A man in his late 20s stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance and then looks down again. Empathy. Easy. Failure. Everything is cool between you and this guy. He's a big fan. Makes small talk. Look at the stuffed bird. A competent word of work of taxidermy. 
The white and brown seabird live, lies among piles of coasters and di drying mugs. One of its wings is broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shelf that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. This is a great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you're in right now. What happened to the bird? Look, your buddy is over there. He looks at the doors where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean by buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Are you a bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. Understood. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, thank you. Don't mean to be rude or nothing. I'm just insensitive. The sign reads, Mess Hall reserved for union members. Doors open, 4 o'clock. Royal Pinball Machine. Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. She nodded towards the man in the orange bomber jacket. Hey! A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Shake Hello. his hand. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. Ooh, invent a name for yourself. 83%. Let's do that. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon. But mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath, you're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. It is not yet time. Okay, then. <laughs> he processes the information, then disregards it. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday, too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he's been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you've been otherwise occupied. You mean him, not towards the cafeteria manager. Yeah, just talk to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? Apparently. It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Yes, the police. I'm aware I'm a policeman. Right. And the interviews? <laughs> uh, yes. Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Look, man, you know... Yeah. Does that mean the body is no longer in the tree? Completely. Completely? <laughs> Does that mean you took the body down from the tree? I don't like dead bodies. Sure. But did you take it down from the tree? Dead body? Mm -hmm. No. So the body <laughs> is still in the tree. Yeah. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. <laughs> we should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Good plan. What a shame. Get to it now. Rip that body down from the tree. Um. What are we supposed to do again? Talk to the manager, then go take the body down. Let's do that. After you, officer. Wait, should I have a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? It wasn't on me when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle is a short wave, and you can use it to report your bad mission, missing. I advise you try to locate it as quickly as possible. But, but getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by clicking on him. Awesome. Alright, let's go talk to the manager then. This is great. I'm having a great time. Come on. <laughs> I get to be me, a twat. <laughs> the man with the unimpressive beard. Oh, notices you arriving, approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. He responds tersely. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41... He looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. 
What is gold and orange like a forest fire but smells like liquor? Are you kidding me? No, man, help me out. What is gold and orange that smells like liquor? It's you. It's obviously you. You smell like liquor and you're orange. <laughs> See, everyone agrees it's your color scheme. We're on the right track with this name thing. Is this what you get when you call the police now? We've been waiting for a week here. Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Okay, so he's the smart one, right? We're the, we're the inspector gadget of the team. Yes, of course. <laughs> he takes a step back. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call, correct? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. You look behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What? Of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are. But as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective? He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. Right then. Questions. I got this. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous questions, which you can later use in the more sinister ones. Not vice versa. Where exactly is the body? Behind this building there is a courtyard. He points to the kitchen behind him. They hoisted him up on a tree there. And how do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? He points to the west. First you exit through that. Then to your right you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for keys. This hole is big enough for... What is that? Friend Corner... I don't know, cavalry to fit through. Why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. Have they not been telling... You, you're a cop? Am I not a cop? Everything is my business. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked her for her number. That's why Sylvie went away, I hope you appreciate that. The lieutenant opens his little notebook at the cover. The number is safely tucked away in a small pocket. Thank you, he says. Mystery solved. Is it? Because I thought you were supposed to be investigating the lynching, not my employee, employer conduct. I guess I like to be thorough. Good for you. Was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. Who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they if he doesn't know? Ah. Before you said they hoisted him up on a tree. What did you, who do you mean by they? Oh. He's a bit surprised you called that. People are saying it was the union dock workers. That it was a lynching. Who exactly is saying that? The locals. Customers. The people who eat here. A lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the debardeurs tell themselves tell you this? Or is it a rumour? I don't really know. You'll have to ask you. Why would the dock workers lynch this man? I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. He makes little quotation marks with his fingers. The man they hung, hanged, was a security guard for the harbour company. I hear a mercenary. The Unionistas probably thought they'd sent him a message. Did you kill him? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him. Suddenly you tense up. Blood is being pushed to your muscles. You should hound him on this. Hound him hard. The prey drives... No, no. Okay, I'm not going to hound you on this. Oh, no, thank you. Let's go. Not so fast. He points to you. You owe me 130 real. Oh, crap. What's real? Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. He pronounces the R with a mock aristocratic accent. The IIR or inter 
is solitary real, is global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume that means you owe him some money. By real, you mean some sort of street cred. No, you don't owe me street cred. You owe me money. You owe me, the, you owe this establishment 130 real. He points to the red ledger on the counter. What do I owe this? What exactly is money? What are you, a philosopher? Just getting my bearings. Money is what grown up people use to pay for things. Like this hostel room. Or, he peeks into the ledger, eight bottles of potent blend and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Interesting, where do I get it from? Are you serious? From your work? I don't know. You can take bribes, I guess. He looks at Kim. I'm sorry, I don't think cops take bribes. Some do take recompense. The lieutenant is dead serious. But only to survive. Why do I need it? For survival. To pay me. Unless you want to become a hobo. Do you want to become a hobo? <laughs> There's nowhere else to say it, Martinez. And it's cold. Spring outside. Money doesn't make you happy. But it lets you be unhappy for a while longer. <laughs> if you run out of money, you die. It's like that for all of us. Me too. That's why I need you to pay me. He stops and says mostly to himself, I'm not an asshole. Proceed, but don't show him the coins. They're yours. No, I'll show him the coins. Yes, it is. Count them and give them to him. That's 10 plus 10 plus 20 equals 40. I'm now down to 90, right? No, you see... There's a tinge of sadness in his voice. That's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times smaller than the real. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. 100 times smaller? Yes. But that's horrible. It is. He stands silently looking at the coppers on the counter. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have? Darkness rides. Pick up the coins. It does, doesn't it? There's a shuffle of nylons as Lieutenant Kitsuruki looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. What happens now? He turns to the Lieutenant. I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then he shrugs. Officer, maybe you're better off working this from home now? You live in Jamrock, right? That's not that far away. I don't have a home. Officer, a pattern of creases appear on his forehead. You really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in the car. Call them, ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. The man wants to say something, then thinks better of it. Good luck. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank in this place, sure, isn't it? As I said, I don't think I have one. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. I don't know. Near? South maybe? You don't really know, do you? I don't. Does this mean I'm homeless? South maybe doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Could I trace the way back somehow? To the exact street? The exact number on a building? You could try. Run some addresses in your head, and when you get the time, maybe a street or apartment will appear. Whew. Jesus. What a... what a mish. Let's have a look at what, we, what we've got at, and what we're at at the moment. We have many tasks. I don't want to start smoking again. We could do karaoke though, I'm down for that. Uh, what else we got? We can internalize this. What does that mean? Plus one encyclopedia. Factual memory returns. Trace your drunken steps back home. Okay. Okay, we're internalizing that. We're going to wrap this episode up because we're out of time for today. But this is crazy good. I love this. This is fucking fantastic. We're going to have a good time in this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.